make this into a mid. Then the next one would be a mid light, light mid, light gray. There. We can wipe this out here because this will be part of the same. So if I were to take all those little objects and everything and round them off, I'll end up with a design like this. Now my paint, this is why um, Anne's painting worked earlier. She, she had them, the masses were well designed, well distributed, the one with the waterfall. So when I'm painting, I say, I keep reminding myself, now look, what's, look how that looks nice. What will happen if I do this? Put a spot there and here, and then I take this and I put that over there, and then I take this and put it, put this in here. What's going to happen, like most people paint, is they're scattering things all over the place, and the painting's not holding together anymore. You're starting to you're starting to break up the masses. So the trick is not to break up the masses, but just to switch to colors. Now you might think, well, how am I going to make one rock different than the, than the water. Well, it's obvious because the rock is going to be um, a warm color and the water is going to be blue, so it's going to make a very good distinction there. Now, these are the, 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 the and now if I get my darks in there, now notice that I'm not using a, a dark value. That I reserve for things that are, you know, to make things look 3D, like, okay, we got you got to need the shadow side of that evergreen tree, right? And maybe we need a little crack here in the rock. That doesn't matter because these are accents. But if you squint your eyes, it still holds the shapes together. But if I start putting darks all over the place like this, trying to do what the photograph is showing me, I got a, I got a dark over here and then another one over there and then another one over here, another one over there and then some in here. I mean, I don't have any really dark masses in here. They're little mini shapes, so it's not that broken up. But imagine if I scattered my darks all over the place. My painting won't hold together. It won't be comfortable to look at. It won't be soothing to look at. So overall, a good plan is that if most of your painting has a mid-value mass, now you might not understand this in one day because it takes you know quite a long time to figure out what, what I'm trying to say here but if you can pick it up now in one class that's very cool but a painting will sing and one of me you want you might want to take notes of this but a painting will sing if overall you design it to work within the mid value in other words most of the painting ends up in a mid value which is where the range of the, the bright colors are anyway. The reason why an apple, when you paint an apple that looks so brilliant and a banana and a pear, it's because if you take a black and white photograph of it, they end up being a mid value. Once you get into the darks, you won't see the color that well. Watch this. If I start to darken this the way most, a lot of people paint, I get even even darker than that. Look what's starting to happen here. It it what you're doing is you're subtracting the light from your color and you're making the painting go sadder and sadder and sadder. Somber, somber, somber. And the more you darken the painting, that's what you're that's what's gonna happen. The problem is too many artists end up with too many dark paintings. Most of the paintings look like this. Here, actually, let me um, convert this into a painting look so you know what I'm talking about.
Okay, I'm going to simulate the painting here, okay? There. That's like a simulation of a painting. As you can see, this program rounded it all up into an average value. It put everything together and, and sort of like mixed it together. See how it's all tends to be a mid value? But if I do this, like most artists paint, they use a lot of dark colors. The painting ends up looking like this. Lots of dark areas. Your, your blue water tends to be too dark. Because ultramarine blue, right out of the tube, tends to be very dark. You might have a... Um, are you there now, Ann? Maybe you'd have a dial-up connection. Do you need a... Do you have a... Um, A DSL or a cable connection? So if I go this way, look what happens now with the painting. Isn't that neat? Talking about visualizing it, huh? So if I don't know any better and I'm a dumbbell, I will take this black here and copy it. Well, that's because that's the photograph. But that won't work in the painting because it becomes an eyesore. And so if I do my strategy of staying within that value, I won't make that mistake. I've got a plan. Where I can say, okay, I'm gonna group this together in overall mid value. Get rid of these, see, I don't need those in there. Now, I, I, I given, there will be some areas that will be slightly darker than others. Like your painting, this is only to visualize it. It doesn't mean that when you're finished your painting, you're going to end up with only three values. That's impossible. You're going to end up with 10 values. But your, but your plan of action is to round it up to an average mid-value. But that doesn't mean that I can't have little subtle variations within the mid-values. So I can do this, for example. Okay, I can do little mini shifts as long as I don't get okay I can do that that's okay I can do this in other words I have to make the painting look 3d so I'm gonna have to do this oops so here, I'm going to have to do a little mini shift in there, you know, to make that look like squared off. And then I saw there's a little bit of indentations on the rock over here. Do a little mini shift in here. There are little mini shifts in the water here. As long as I try as much as possible to make sure that I don't end up with this value being exact.